This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso right here on SABC3. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now, let's talk interplanetary exploration. Okay, Pluto, all right. The most well-known dwarf planet in our solar system has often been thought to be uh, too cold to sustain life with an average temperature of about minus 232 degrees Celsius. However, a recent study published in Nature Geoscience now suggests that the world may in fact have a warm ocean underneath its icy exterior. And with the presence of warm water on the planet, scientists say there could actually be life. So Professor of Planetary Geosciences at the Open University, David Rothery, joins us uh, via video call from the UK to tell us a bit more about this news. Professor Rothery, thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, guys. Professor, this is fascinating, and I mean, you've got our attention here, but what is the probability of Pluto having not just water, but warm water underneath its very well-known icy surface? Well, you're quite right to stress that the surface is incredibly cold. There's no chance of any kind of life at the surface. But underneath, we think that the ice has melted and it is liquid, therefore water. And actually, it doesn't matter whether that water is what we call warm or whether it's just above freezing. Provided it's liquid water, that gives us a chance for life, yeah. especially as the rock below the water will be a little bit warmer than the water and the water can seep into the rock and come out carrying a bit of heat and some chemicals. And, and that's how you can feed life. You don't need sunlight for life. You need sunlight for plant life, but there are places in the deep parts of the Earth's oceans where it's far too deep for sun to penetrate. But we do have warm water seeping out from the rock, carrying chemicals, and there are microbes, bacteria-like things that survive on that chemical energy. So it happens on the Earth. It could happen in a slow, modest way on the floor of the internal ocean of Pluto. Hmm. So could you maybe describe in further detail, I think you have touched on it a little bit, about the kind of life that we could possibly expect to see if there was indeed life uh, in Pluto's warmer waters. What could one expect to see? Well... We know that the, we're, ha we're happy that there are the conditions for life. Mm -hmm. So that means Pluto is habitable. Mm -hmm. whether, it, whether it is inhabited by life, we're not sure. But if it is life, we're thinking of very, very simple single-celled organisms. Uh, we know that this data, for example, was retrieved by NASA's New Horizons probe, uh, which launched in 2006. Yeah. It travelled for nine and a half years for a flyby that lasted only 15 minutes. Please tell us more about that mission and, and what about the data that was accumulated during this 15-minute window? OK, well, as you say, it's, it's a long way to Pluto, so it did take nine and a half years. They swung by Jupiter on the way and got some useful data. But the close encounter with Pluto, OK, but the headline figure is 15 minutes. We didn't stop for 15 minutes and then move on. It was travelling fast all the time. It was close to Pluto for 15 minutes. It got useful data for about a whole day before and after the encounter. And it retrieved so much data, it took it well over a year to transmit all the data back. They stored it on board, and the signal is so faint, they couldn't blast it all back quickly. We had to send it at a slow trickle to be sure we got high-quality data. Mm -hmm. And people are still analysing the data, including the data which show these cracks in the icy surface, which suggests that the ice has been cracking as far back in time as we can see. That's the evidence for the internal ocean. Uh, but the whole of Pluto is, is a fascinating place. Well, I say the whole of it, we only saw one side of it because it was rotating so slowly. When we were close, we only got a good view of one side. But it's, it's icy, frozen water ice, extremely rigid that forms mountains because it, it won't sag downhill like a glacier because the ice is so cold and rigid. But other places, there's nitrogen ice that's welled out to fill a big impact basin. And then these cracks suggesting that the base of the water ice is molten, and that's your internal ocean. Professor David Rothery, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, guys. That is Professor of Planetary Geosciences at the Open University, Professor David Rothery, sharing some very exciting news and yep. developments in terms of interplanetary exploration. And, uh, I mean, we're all excited to find out about the further developments of yeah. the story. Maybe in uh, one day we'll be able to go on a holiday to Pluto. Yeah, and you could reach out to your ancestors. <laughs>